And welcome back. Today's going to be a short but very interesting video. Recently I replaced the radiator in my car because the core of the radiator developed a coolant leak. After the radiator was removed, I decided to open up the lower portion of the radiator, which you can see right here, which appears to be made of a reinforced black plastic. Probably nylon because ABS has a maximum temperature rating of only 220 degrees Fahrenheit. To take a look at the design of the automatic transmission cooler located inside. Even under normal operation, automatic transmission fluid can reach temperatures much higher than the engine coolant. So it needs to be kept at a lower temperature to ensure long life of the fluid as well as the life of the transmission. Under heavier loads such as driving uphill or towing, the fluid temperature can get very hot. So bringing that fluid down to a temperature closer to 200 degrees Fahrenheit is absolutely necessary. Now let's take a closer look at this piece here. Now the upper portion looks almost identical to the lower portion. You have the lower radiator hose connection here and then the other one has the upper. Both have this lip and there's a metal edge made out of aluminum that curves over, goes all the way around the perimeter to keep this locked in nice and tight. When the thermostat on your vehicle opens up, when the engine temperature has gotten hot enough, what will happen, coolant will flow into the top of the radiator, it'll go through the entire core of the radiator where it's going to be cooled down with the fins and the cooling fan and the cooler coolant will end up in this bottom rail where it's going to leave into the lower radiator hose and recirculate all over again. Now if you look at the transmission cooler, one side has a brass barb and the other side has a flare fitting. The fluid will flow through that and when it flows through the temperature will become lower when it returns to the transmission. If you take a look at the inside, right there, you can now see this long brass or copper tube when the coolant flows down into this bottom section before exiting out of this nipple over here, it's going to flow along this pipe as it flows by. It's going to remove heat from the transmission fluid and then it's going to flow into the engine. Let me pop this out of here. We'll take a closer look. Now before I show you the tube up close, explain how it was designed. This right here is the housing. I just want to show you how strong this is. If I take a hammer, Pretty strong stuff. You could take a bunch of blows before that would actually break like that. Now if you look right over here where it's split after bashing it really hard with the hammer, you can see it has like a little bit of a grainy look to it, like there's fibers embedded inside that plastic. So I'm willing to bet this is probably a fiber reinforced nylon. All right, this is what it looks like when it's removed. And if you take a look at the end right here, you can see it's a tube within a tube. So the walls are very thin, maybe 3 30 seconds of an inch. Transmission fluid goes in. It becomes a very thin sheet that flows all around the inside wall of this tube. The purpose of that is to increase the surface area so the heat can be drawn away from the transmission fluid very easily. Having the hole also allows the coolant inside that plastic channel at the bottom of the radiator to flow around this pipe as well as through it to absorb the heat. And that's how it works. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, be sure to rate it a thumbs up, subscribe, and post links to this video on other websites and blogs. Thank you very much for watching.